Jesus Image family. Let's just all enter in. Let's just lift our hands. You can pray in the spirit if you want, but before service, I was just hearing the phrase, we have been brought near by his blood. Ephesians 2.13 says, but now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have brought, been brought near by the blood of Christ. Jesus, we just thank you for your blood, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, for everything that you've done for us on the cross, Lord. We lift up your name, Jesus. We don't come in the name of hype, Lord. We come in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you that church is not about church, but it's about you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, that you wanna renew our love tonight, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, for first love, God. I pray that our eyes would be fixed on you, Jesus. Our eyes would be fixed on the King, Lord. No distraction, Lord, we've come for you. I pray, Lord, that you would renew our hearts, renew a burning heart, Jesus, a burning heart, a heart in love for you, Lord. We give you all the glory. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, into this room to move and have your way, Lord, to heal broken hearts, to heal bodies, Jesus. We love you, in Jesus' name, amen.
so thankful for your love. So thankful for your love. For it is by the means in which we get to stand here and love you back. It's because you loved us. We're so thankful. Tonight, Jesus, we pray that you are loved. That you are ministered to. That you're adored. That you're revered. That you are exalted high above every other thing in our lives. Pray the preeminence of Christ reign in this room tonight. We love you, Jesus, and we praise you. And we give you all glory. It belongs to you and you alone. In your precious, beautiful name we pray. Amen. Amen. Why don't we just seal it with praise and thank the Lord with our words. Jesus, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We thank you for the cross. We thank you for the blood. We thank you for your death, burial, and resurrection. We thank you, Jesus, that you are seated high in heavenly places, Lord. And we thank you that you're coming back to rule and reign. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Man, you guys can find your way back to your seats. Uh, let's just thank our, our worship team, our choir that has sang and worshiped for an hour straight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Lord. You know, we're singing that. I just want to be where you are. I just want to be close to your heart. Thank you for your love. And immediately the... I was reminded of the gospel while we were worshiping that. And he said, the only reason why you get to sing that, Ryan, is because I first wanted to be where you were. That deity wrapped himself in humanity and actually became a seed in a woman. And his blood was shed that we can actually just be in his presence. And I'm not preaching the gospel this morning, but it was in me as, as I was... Uh, as we're worshiping. And, but why don't we open up the scriptures to Matthew chapter 6. We're going to pick up the offering. We're going to receive the offering tonight in the presence of Jesus. We don't pick it up. We receive it. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> uh, when I first started doing the offering, I said pick up offering at least 30 times. And then Pastor Michael had to remind me that we don't pick up the offering, Ryan. Like I, he said, like I used to back in my Salinas days, but we receive the offering in love. It's way different. Um, amen. So I just got to reprogram my mind. But I'm going to start in verse, yeah, let's just start in 19, and then I'm going to read through. It says, don't store up your treasures here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroys them and where thieves break in and steal. This is the New Living Translation. It says, store your treasures in heaven where Store your treasures in heaven, where moth and rust cannot destroy, and thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, their desires of your heart will be also. The next scripture says, Your eye is like a lamp that provides light for your whole body. Or your eye yeah, is like a lamp that provides a light for your whole body. When your eye is healthy, another translation says, When your eye is single, your whole body is flooded with light. But when your eye is unhealthy, your whole body is filled with darkness. And if that light you think you have is actually darkness, how deep is that darkness? And then it goes on to say, no one can serve two masters, for you will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. How many of you guys know money makes a horrible master? I feel I felt in this room this morning as as I was praying today that there may still be some of us in this room that feel governed by money that to some degree it may still master us in some way and and how do we, how do we know that 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 it dictates our day mood swings highs and lows whether we have enough we don't we worry about it how many know that the world I mean people I mean, they fall into depression, anxiety, 
Some people have lost their lives over money because it's a horrible master. But how many of you guys know that we have a good father that's intentional with his children and that he loves us so much? And, you know, I believe it's 1 Timothy 6 says that the love of money, right, is the root of all evil. Later on in that verse, it says that because it brings sorrow with it. But I pray that we are released from sorrow, anxiety, depression, fear, and giving money. Why? Because our eyes to be single, looking at the Lord, not the bill that we owe or the debt that we have. It's easy to fall into that. I have done it. But man, we serve a good God who gives us wisdom that we can be governed by him and mastered by the Lord. How many know finances is near and dear to him? Why? For one, it's the means by which he was actually betrayed. So it's kind of a big deal. Like the Lord could have used anything and put that in scripture, but it was actually finances that was the means in which the betrayal came. And so I, I know it, it is, it's near and dear to the Lord, and, but he's like, children, I, I got you. Like, you're no longer an orphan. You're a son and you're a daughter. So you don't have to beg. All you got to do is ask because we're children, and he supplies freely to his kids. And I, and I pray that that's just broken off of us, that maybe you have felt today, yesterday, this past week, whatever it may have been, that finances have kind of controlled your emotions or the highs and lows and governed you throughout the day. And he just wants to release that today and to know that you serve a good master. And his name is Jesus Christ, the one who owns the earth and the fullness thereof. And so I'm just going to pray over us today. Lord, we thank you for today. God, we thank you, Jesus, that you're a good father. Lord, we thank you, Jesus, that you own it all. We thank you, Jesus, that we come asking as children, Lord, just for you, for our eye to be single once again. I pray you bless every giver in this room. Father, everyone watching online who has actually sowed seed into this ministry, into your hands specifically. Father, we thank you that you bless them, that you're a good father, that you you feed the sparrows, that you also feed your children. So we thank you, Lord, that we could be actually children of the wind, that our day is actually dictated by the Holy Spirit, not finances or money. We love you, Jesus. I pray just a releasing of that over everybody in the room. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. um, If you guys, first, if you guys need an envelope, there's people all throughout the room. Just lift your hand. We can get you one. We have text to give for those watching online. Before we go into a break, I do want to make mention, you know, we also we have a few announcements, but one of them is Jesus School. We have two months left for applications for our 23-24 Jesus School year. So if you guys are thinking about coming to Jesus School in person, we would love for you guys to apply. Those watching online, we are now open up for international students, so you can be in Papua New Guinea and apply to Jesus School if you want. So we encourage you guys, you guys have two more months. There's no place like being in that room, being with a bunch of other hungry people that have sacrificed, who have given up houses, family, leaving family behind, leaving everything just to come in a room and to go after Jesus. And there, there is truly nothing like it. And obviously we also with that is House of Bethany. How many of you guys have been part of House of Bethany? Yes, amen. Well, listen, you guys can apply as well. Obviously, it's a place that you can grow in your craft, the grace that God has given you as far as musically and vocally, songwriting, media. We have all of that. But what's beautiful about House of Bethany is that you get to learn how to truly, not even learn, just catch it in the air, how to minister to the Lord, to truly be priests, 
to be a, a, a Levitical people that, that loves Jesus and ministers to him and moves his heart. And you get to learn from amazing men and women that, that have really given their lives for this and, and have walked in years of surrender to Jesus. And we just get to come in the room and, 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 and learn that heart posture, which is who we are as a church. We are ministers to Jesus. And so I want to encourage you guys to apply as well. If you already are a Jesus School student, you guys can apply for House of Bethany already. So I just wanted to give those few amounts, announcements before you guys come up and give into the hands of Jesus. So if you guys do have your offering, you guys can come and give. We'll be back in a few minutes. night tonight in store for you guys. How many of you guys were here in the morning? Just raise your hand. Wasn't it amazing? Yes. Pastor Michael and Larissa Miller, they are family. He said it this morning. They have been family to us over these past five years. 
I know myself and my wife and many others have just been blessed since I've been here, even longer uh, than that. But I, I mean, I've, I'm obviously a part of Jesus School, and so we've, we've had them every year since I first started, and uh, we are truly 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 thankful for you guys we're thankful for what you bring to this house we're thankful this morning we're thankful for what you guys are going to bring tonight we're so thankful so why don't we stand up and why don't we just thank them and honor them as they come up here tonight Thank you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's an honor to be with you guys. Uh, it is such an honor to be with you. Um, I think Florida might be hotter than Texas, though. Uh, we, um, this is our second home. It's our home away from home. Um, we love Michael and Jess, and uh, I'm just so. Uh, it's just such an honor to stand in a place where you know the scriptures and presence of God and uh, the church and the authority of the church is present, celebrated. Uh, he's building his church. And I feel so kindred with Michael and Jess and their heart for the local church, their heart for you, their heart for Orlando, their heart to see this city transformed by the presence of Jesus. And so um, it has just been uh, one of the greatest privileges to watch them um, and the Lord build this house and to see the precious hearts that are here now. Uh, this feels like family. And so it is a real honor to be with you guys. We pastor a church in Dallas called Upper Room. Um, and we are, we planted it. It's it's uh, 14 years old, I believe. Is that right? Almost 14. And um, it started out as a prayer meeting. And uh, it was in those early days that M Michael and I had some mutual friends. And so Michael started showing up and preaching. And I was always golfing when he was preaching, so I was away. And, um, and I would always watch the stream. And like post Michael, it was like a bowling ball rolled through our church. Uh, because there were so many bodies on the ground, and that, that wasn't <laughs> typical of our culture. Um, but God used Michael so powerfully uh, to touch many of our core leaders, and, uh, and so it's just an honor to sow back into a place that we have reaped so much from. And uh, this is my beautiful bride. She's going to preach tonight. I, um, I know. <laughs> they were not that excited when they heard I was preaching this morning. Um, we celebrated 15 years of marriage this week. So, oh yes. So, let me pray for her. I want to pray for my bride. So, Jesus, um, you have uh, anointed this beautiful daughter of yours and my bride to teach. Uh, Lord, she's a true teacher. And I pray that as she um, teaches your word, that you would pierce our hearts. Lord, we want our hearts to be pierced by your voice. And that today we would not harden our hearts, Lord, that you would continue to soften our hearts to receive your word and that our, our hearts would be good soil tonight. Specifically husbands. I feel like the, the Lord's gonna speak to husbands tonight and that your heart would be softened uh, to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying to you and that these seeds would multiply and bear fruit, abundant fruit in your marriage, abundant fruit in your family, where it matters. And so uh, we present to you, Lord, our hearts tonight and say, come and do what you desire to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Hi. Like Michael said, we're really honored to be with you. We feed from this house. We worship with you in our home and in our secret place. And so this does feel like family. Michael and Jessica are precious, precious friends to us. Um, we just draw strength from knowing that they're doing what we're doing across the nation. Amen? Um, I, okay, before we get started, I, I just had to say to David and Alicia, 
Um, I've just been loving watching you guys today. You look like fish in water. I mean, don't you guys love them? I'm so thankful that you guys are... <laughs> it's, a, it's a real delight to watch people do what they were made to do. It's so cool. And, and then while we're doing that, I just want to honor the whole Jesus Image staff because you guys are amazing, amazing, amazing <laughs> servants. You are all amazing servants. This, uh, we're, we always go home and we tell our team, like, you guys, we have to up our hospitality game. Like, these Jesus image people serve unlike anyone else. I mean, I was getting in the car in the parking lot today with a, with a melted um, protein bar. So, like, chocolate was dripping from my hand. And some precious woman, I don't know if you're in here, like, runs up to me. Let me take it. Let me take it. I'm like, no, it's dripping chocolate. Literally, it had been sitting in the hot car. She said, I want to take your trash. I'm like... <laughs> To me, that summarizes the beauty and the servant heart of this house. How beautiful. Jesus said, if you want to be great, serve. And so let me just tell you, in my eyes, you are great in the kingdom. Um, so will you stand with me? I'd like to, I know you, we're, we're doing that whole liturgical sit up. Stand up, sit down, stand up, sit down. But I want us to just um, center our hearts and our affection on the Lord again. So close your eyes. Jesus, you are our treasure and our great reward. And, um, Lord, we honor you in our midst. We acknowledge you in our midst. We don't take it lightly, Lord, that the King of Kings, the creator of the universe, would come and walk in our midst. You are dear to us, Lord. Would you look at him and tell him you're precious to me, Jesus? I love you. I love you. Just for a moment, pour out your heart to him. Jesus, I want to know you more tonight, Lord. I do not want to play church for the next hour, however long we're here. Jesus, I want to know you. I want to hear from you. I want you to take that sword in your mouth and cut. Lord, I want you to form and shape and prune. I want to see your face and I want to be undone again by your love, God. I want to know your word. I want you to write it on my heart, Jesus. Help us to yield to you. Give us ears to hear, eyes to see, and a heart to receive you. Grant us a willing and obedient spirit, God. We honor you and give you praise. Amen. Amen. You can have a seat, and you can open your Bible to Matthew chapter 25. I love that song we were singing, Come Lord Jesus. And every time I sing a song like that, I have this, this love sickness in me, and in the same breath, I feel like we're not ready. Do you feel that? I feel that fear of God. Oh Lord, the bride, we're not ready. I don't know if I'm ready. Even though I'm singing and I'm crying out and I'm longing, come, Lord Jesus, but I don't know if I fully know what that means for us. And so we're going to start with this parable. And um, I felt the Lord wanting in particular to talk about um, 
your pain while we're on this side of eternity and, and to give purpose to it. And so we're going to go there after this. All right? So we're going to start in verse 1, Matthew 25. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, a cry was heard, behold, the bridegroom is coming, go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered saying, no, lest there should not be enough for us and you, but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. Verse 10, and while they went to buy, the bridegroom came and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. I can feel the fear of the Lord. I want to point out a few things from this parable. I want to point out that all 10 were virgins. What does that mean? It means they were pure. They were pure in heart, just like you. They're all, all 10 of them are virgins. All 10 of them have lamps. They all have lamps, which means they're excited. They're waiting for the bridegroom to come. It was their position and their role to wait for the bridegroom. It's like, that's my job. You follow me? They're all pure in heart. They're all awaiting him to come. And they all have oil. They all had intimacy they all had some level of of zeal, of passion, of knowledge of God. All of them. We like to just like assume I'm with the five wise and throw out those foolish ones, but those foolish ones had their lamp, they they were virgins, they had their oil. They were in here worshiping. They were at this house of Bethany. And look what else happened. All of them, verse 5, when he was delayed, they all slumbered and they all slept. So a word of caution is that even the wise fell asleep. Even the ones that had the extra oil were still lulled to sleep in the delay. But what made them wise was that they had extra. See, you can be wise and you can be full of passion you can be full of zeal and still fall asleep and so the question is how do I get that extra oil now right this is what we're all thinking it's like Jesus set it up very effectively here they are here's the foolish here's the wise they don't have oil they go to buy it they can't find it the door gets shut and he says this phrase I don't know you I'm thinking they're saying but we know you 
Well, we, well, we know you. We were waiting for you. We had lamps. We had oil. We kept ourselves pure. We know you. But there was something about him knowing them that was missing. And so we could talk about tonight all kinds of ways to get oil, right? Oil is intimacy. Oil is deep, intimate connection with him. We could talk about worship, but I think you guys got that down. (laughs) I think you're good there. And so what I would like to focus in on is the oil that comes in suffering, the oil that comes in pain, and the oil that comes in pressure. Because the invitation for God to look at you and say, I know you, is at its most sweetest place when you're in pain. The invitation for him to really know you happens most when you're at your lowest for you to expose yourself fully to him. You know, we've been, now Michael said, we've been in ministry for, well, he's been in ministry a long time, but I've been in ministry for 13 and a half years. And the thing that I grow more and more aware of is the pain that people walk through. We, because we're pastors, we get this unique privilege to be front and center to people's pain, to their trauma, to their loss, to their heartache. And I, listen, I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer, but here's the thing that I've realized is that pain is inevitable on this side. It is, it is a guarantee. And what you do with it How you respond in it matters so much. Because we can like, we can come in here and be full of like passion for the Lord. But when the bottom drops out of your life, man, worship is different in that place. You know, Jesus promises, like, I can't wait for him to come. Revelation 21 promises that he's going to wipe every tear from our eyes and that there will be no more pain. But now there's going to be pain. You're like, yeah, (laughs) I'm alive. I know. There's pain. But Michael and I have gotten to sit with, we've gotten to sit with parents who are holding their child that just went to be with the Lord. I've, I've, I've held mom's hands when they buried their children. I've sat in rooms with women who've found out that their husband's been having an affair. And I'm telling you that those places of pressing, of pain, and of crushing. When the Lord says in Psalm 34, verse 18, that he's near to the brokenhearted, I have never, I've been in some of the most beautiful settings of worship, but I have never felt the Lord's nearness like I have in some of those places. He is, it's, it's not like a, it's not for a pillow stitching. He's near to the brokenhearted. Michael always says, God who is omnipresent desires to be especially present. And with the brokenhearted, he is especially present. But what I see religion do, I see religion try to like just, just, just shove that under the rug. Just like prayer, prayer and move on. And I see people who don't know what to do with that pain. And there's a lot of ways that we cope with 
pain. We numb it, we harden, we medicate, we do all kinds of things, but nothing is capable of touching pain and bringing healing aside from the blood of Jesus. You know, pain is a result of the fall. Like I had four babies. <laughs> it hurt. <laughs> My five-year-old asked me the other day, does it hurt when you have a baby? I said, yes. <laughs> You're worth it, but yes, that hurt. Pain is a result of the fall. So depending on, you may have pain that you cause. Many of us are like, yeah, I, I made that bed. And I'm, I'm like, I'm dealing with the consequences of my own sin. Or you may have pain that comes from somebody else's sin. Or you may just have pain because we live in a fallen world. However you slice it, it's inevitable. Am I right? Psalm 56, 8 says that Jesus, he catches your tears in a bottle. You know how close you'd have to be to me right now to catch my tears? You have to be so close to me. You know, I love Psalm 45 is one of my favorite scriptures, prophetic psalms about the Lord. You know, that he's, he's the fairest of the sons of men, that he's, 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 um, anointed with the oil of gladness because he loves righteousness and he hates wickedness. Well, he, he may be anointed with the oil of gladness, but he's a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. And because he's Jesus, he's all, at, all of that all at once. But I'm telling you for me personally, the places of pain that I've walked through, getting to know him as the man of sorrows acquainted with grief has been the greatest treasure to me. That way I'm not trying to pretend like that didn't hurt. I'm not trying to just you know, what is that children's book? It's like, you can't go over it, can't go under it, gotta go through it. As pastors, we watch people go through pain, and it is just, there's no way around it. But there's oil. But there is oil. And so I want to talk to you about how to respond when you're in the pressing and the crushing and the pain, no matter where it came from. I mean, maybe, you know, if you just need to repent, like if you're, if you're having a hangover every day, <laughs> you're in pain, that's your fault. You just stop doing that, you know? Are you with me? Uh, I mean, I'm not trying to make light of addiction. I understand but I want you to now just flip a page or so over to Matthew 26. I love that the man of sorrows is going to wipe every tear from our eyes. You know, because I think in our, um, in our particular stream, if you will, you know, we love healing, right? Like, I want to see every body healed and every dead person raised. I want to see all of that. Like, I'm, I am in for it and I am contending for it, but I'm also living in spaces where that doesn't always happen. And I think we cannot pretend when those, th those prayers don't get answered the way we want it. Like the baby doesn't get healed. The, the, the cancer, like it took over. And, and we don't always get equipped to deal with that sorrow. Okay. <clears throat> I told the Lord, I would, I would like to give a message that like I've already given before, Lord. 
that I like I, I have this down. He's like, or you can listen to me. <laughs> and I know better, so here we are. Matthew 26, verse 36. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane and said to the disciples, sit here while I go and pray over there. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. Then he said to them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful even to death. Stay here and watch with me. He went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping and said to Peter, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, a second time, he went away and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if this cup cannot pass away from me unless I drink it, your will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. So he left them, went away again, and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. All right. Ten points for the person who knows what Gethsemane means. It's, it's an oil press. Someone said it. Ten points, wherever you are. It's an oil press. So in the other accounts of this this part of the story, it says that Jesus goes out to the Mount of Olives, which the Garden of Gethsemane, the Mount of Olives, are they're connected. But it says, as was his custom. So he loved going to the Mount of Olives. He loved going to this garden where they made oil. And do you know how you make oil? You crush what? You crush olives. And did you know that in order to get oil, they go through how many times of crushing? Three. So three different times, Jesus kneels to pray, and you could see him being crushed. He's saying, I'm sorrowful. I'm exceedingly sorrowful. And he's being crushed. And he goes to the disciples they're asleep. He tries to wake them up, and he goes back again. Father, take this cup from me, crushed. And we see in Luke's account that he's in his crushing. He's what he's sweating drops of blood. It's like the oil. And he goes a third time to go be crushed there in Gethsemane. Oil's coming out of him. Oil's coming out of him. I understand that when we come in here and we're, we're worshiping the Lord, and we're being intimate with him, we are, we are filling up with oil. And I know when we're in our secret place, we're filling up with oil. But let me tell you, that place of pressing, crushing and sorrow and the heart that's honest that says I don't want to do this if if the son of God could tell the father hey is there another way to make this happen if he could be that honest hey hey father I don't want to do this <laughs> he's being honest is he not He's being honest. I don't want to do this. And then he yields. But not my will, but yours be done. This is the place of oil. 
this is the place. In Luke's account, it says that they, they go to the garden and he kneels to pray. And we have this imagery that uses similar words to, the, to worship, which means to bow. And we have this picture of Jesus being totally submitted, even in his, in his flesh, in his very honest place with the Father, he submitted. He submitted. I love this picture of him. He's like, he's like us. He's a man. He doesn't want to go through with it. He doesn't want to experience this sorrow. And yet he yields. He surrenders. He says, not my will, but yours be done, which is the truest heart of worship. You know, when you're in pain and you and you're honest with the Lord, that's that place where the bridegroom comes and he says, I know you. Because you, when you went through that, you were real with me. You came to me and said, I hate this. <laughs> I don't like this. This hurts. I'm frustrated. I'm mad that I contended and that I prayed for that and I'm angry that you, that you didn't come through. Have you ever been that honest with God? That's what he desires from you because then he gets to really know you. You know, David was a man after God's own heart and David was constantly letting God have it. (laughs) Like, how dare you? But it was the honesty because the honesty reveals deep trust. It's like we have this, Michael and I can have a, big argument because we are secure in our covenant and our love for each other. And we can say hard things and let each other into the yucky places because because we have that foundation of love. It reveals trust. It reveals like, I know that you love me enough that I can just say this to you. Father, take this cup from me. I don't want it. And then there's a yield. And that's the first pressing. And his friends are falling asleep, which is what the virgins do. I don't know if you've, Michael has such a beautiful teaching on this. I know he's done it here before about falling asleep from sorrow. But this is our greatest temptation, is that when we're, listen, the devil is not, he's not worried about those in rebellion, and he's not, he's, not, he's not trying to tempt me to like go out to the club tonight. <laughs> you know what he wants to do to me? He wants me to be tempted in my sorrow to fall asleep. And you know what? According to Jesus, we will. So the key is now, get oil now. Let him in now. Let him see that true you now in a heart of worship, in a heart of submission. Let him in now. Did you know in, in, I want to show you something in Exodus chapter 27. And then, um, and then we're going to actually worship. So I don't know if, Your team wants to come up here in a minute, but Exodus chapter 27, verse 20. And you shall command the children of Israel that they bring you pure oil of pressed olives for the light to cause the lamp to burn continually. In the tabernacle of meeting outside the veil, which is before the testimony, Aaron and his sons shall tend it from evening until morning before the Lord. Who is Aaron? He's the high priest. 
So it was the people's job to bring this pure pressed oil, and it was Aaron, the high priest's job to tend the lamp. Now I want you to flip to the book of Hebrews. See, you still have a high priest who tends the lamp, who puts oil in the lamp, who trims the wick of the lamp. In Revelation chapter 1, he walks among the lampstands. He's tending to them. You know, the light that shines the furthest shines the brightest where? At home. You could go, you could go do great exploits for the kingdom, but if your heart doesn't know how to walk through suffering and pain in your closest of relationships, inside your home, between you and the Lord, and your life's not burning bright. And he cares for that lamp. I want you to see in in Revelation, I mean, sorry, Hebrews 4. He's taken Aaron's place. Verse 14. Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. The way that we respond to disappointment, to loss, to grief. Is our way of preparing for that weakness that Jesus promised we would have. Prepare for weakness. You're all going to fall asleep. You may be pure. You may be excited. You may be waiting for the bridegroom. You may even have your oil. But it's in the day-to-day crushing and pressing, not my will, but yours be done. I don't want to do this, but not my will, but yours be done. I don't like this that I'm going through, Lord, not my will, but yours be done. It's in that pressing that the extra oil comes, that one day, even if we fall asleep, we'll hear the sound, the bridegroom's coming, and we'll wake up, and we'll have more than enough. It doesn't happen. I love this worship in here, but that oil is not happening in here. This this is wonderful and refreshing, and we need this. But that oil comes in the lonely places. It comes in that garden. And you have a great high priest who went before you, who showed you how to suffer well. He showed you how to, I know he suffered for you, but he also showed you the way to walk through it. Are you guys with me? See, I feel passionate about this because because I, I get to encounter people all the time who didn't let him into those places, and they get weird. We get weird when we band-aid up our broken hearts rather than opening it up to the Lord. 
And I love counseling, but there is nothing, no one and no thing that can touch those deep places like the presence of God himself. We've got, and, and I'm, you know, I mentioned some of those, those moments of horrible trauma that I've, I've walked with people in our community. And in those holy moments, you know what those moms who are losing their children want? All they want to do is worship. Because the presence of God can touch what nothing else can touch. And you know what else those moms do? They long for him to return. And I'm telling you, that is oil. That is oil. We've got some people in our community that work in the, they rescue children from sex trafficking. And um, I, I was meeting with them one day, and it was just a handful of them, and I said, how can, how can we serve you at Upper Room? How can we be a support for you that you're working in that field? And they said, we just want to come into the prayer room. We just want a safe place to come be in the presence of God. And I see them week in and week out just sitting there because the things that they hear, see, and encounter, no one can, there's nothing to say. We can't respond rightly to sin. We, we, we cannot handle it. Only God himself can touch those places. And so can I just walk you through what I've, what I've learned to do? I've just learned to follow Jesus and let those things show up in his presence. I let that pain fully manifest in his presence. I'm not trying to like revelate my way out of it, right? I'm not like, combing the scriptures, hoping I can find that one key verse that will like, although that's good, but fully just going, God, this hurts so bad. And the comforter, you know, that's his name. He's the comforter. But he can't comfort if you don't acknowledge, hey, this hurts. He's, it's almost like his hands are tied. The comforter loves to comfort. He might not say a word, but his presence can heal. His presence can comfort. And then one day you get to comfort someone else with the comfort that you've received. You know, when Jesus walked out to the Mount of Olives, it says it it says, as was his custom. And I imagine like, like David in Psalm 27, you know, it says that an army was encamped against him. The war had arisen against him. His father and mother had forsaken him. And he had purposed this one thing in his heart. One thing I desire. And he, he recounts this moment in his past where the Lord had said to him, seek my face. And he said, my heart said, Lord, your face I will seek. But you see, these are things that we purpose in the small disappointments, in the small places of pain, in the small places of rejection, is that we purpose in those places with the presence of God. Your face I will seek, my heart says. Your face I will seek. And then when war breaks out against you, you've worn out a path. You know, it's like a dog in a backyard. Have you, you know, your dog like just makes their little trail and they wear down your grass if they have just like a path that they go. This is what your heart needs with the presence of God. Little disappointments, little rejections, little pain, little, little suffering where it just wears out a path. I'm always going back to you. My heart says, your face I will seek. And every door of pain, every door of pain can be a doorway into intimacy and oil. Every single one. 
You could be like Joseph said. He said, he said, well, you meant it for harm, but God meant it for good. That, that was a lifetime of practice, as it was for David, as it is for us. It's deeply personal, this oil. It's deeply personal. It's precious, and it's pure. And it happens in closets, and in kitchens, and in cubicles, and in cars. This really hurts, but your face I'm seeking. Come and know me. Come and know me right here, Lord. Come and know me right here. Where I'm angry, where I'm frustrated, where I'm disappointed. Come and know me here. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. Will you guys stand up with me? Are we taking communion in a bit, Ryan? Yeah. You know, the, the Holy Spirit is so good at this. He's so good at this. He is so zealous for this real estate. And he is, he is not thrown off by messy pain. It's like a, it's like a magnet to him because he's the comforter. And so a simple acknowledgement, a simple like, I'll let you in here. Oh, he's close to the brokenhearted. Close. There, there's a reason why your Savior has scars. There's a reason why your high priest has scars. What did he tell Thomas? Here, put your hand here. Because I know pain. I am sympathizing with your weakness. I know this. So just close your eyes. I'm going to ask you, Lord. This is a safe place. 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 The Father is seeking worshipers who worship in spirit and in truth with nothing hidden, no pain hidden. No disappointment hidden. Nothing hidden. The Father is seeking these ones. Come and know me, Lord. If you need comfort, I want to encourage you. Just tell him, I need you to comfort me. I need you to comfort me. I need you to comfort me. It's not, it's not sinful to be in pain and it's not wrong to be weak. Let me say it again. It's not wrong to be in pain. It is not wrong to be weak. It doesn't mean your faith is, something's wrong with your faith. It means that you're human just like Jesus. scar 
scar is one thing and a festering infected wound is another. Scars are proof that you've been hurt and that you made it through. An infected wound is proof that he hasn't been given access to you. So just as we stand here today, let him in. 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 If you want to come to the front, just as a sign of surrender, I invite you to come to the altar. Let him in, let him in, let him in. Let him in, let him in. Lord, we want oil. He's not afraid of pain. He's catching tears. He's catching tears. He's catching tears. He's showing you his side. He's showing you his hands. Showing you his feet. He's so kind. He's gentle and humble in heart. He's sympathizing with your weakness. Let him. Let him comfort you. Let him comfort you. Allow him to comfort you. Oh. Yeah. He can't go under it, can't go over it. Gotta go through it. your great high priest at your side with his eyes of fire his hair like wool come and know me Lord come and know me Come and know me, 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 Jesus. Come and know me. Oh, he sympathizes with your weakness. the kingdom where you pull yourself up by your bootstraps is not the kingdom where you have to be tough. Weakness is a prerequisite. Need is a prerequisite. Oh, be comforted. Be comforted. Be comforted. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just expose it all before him. Just expose it all. In a minute, we're gonna we're gonna take this posture and worship because there is an offering that you give on this side that you will not be able to give on the other side. There's an offering of worship in sorrow and in grief that is so precious to the Lord. It is so precious to him. Yeah. All right. So 
So David, could you lead us in a song? I want you to just now take this place of weakness, pain, need, and worship him from this place. Fight. 
I want to take you one step further, um, especially those that have come down to the altar. And, um, you know, we have two options with sorrow. Uh, one option is to embrace the pressing and, and to invite the Lord in. Um, that, that intimacy that Larissa so beautifully described. But, but the other option, and it's what happened to the 12 disciples in Luke 22, and it's the reason they were falling asleep, uh, was because of sorrow, and that sorrow led them to unbelief. And so one of the things I believe we need to do is repent to the Lord and confess our unbelief. Um, I, I think it's an important step to, to fully cross over because in an environment like this, you, you can come and we can sing over you. And, and I think this is an amazing step and opportunity. But one of the things we need to recognize is that some of our hearts have fallen into unbelief because of sorrow. That physically we're awake, but uh, spiritually we're asleep. And I think there's an alarm clock going off tonight. And your spirit's awakening out of the slumber but I think you need to repent to the Lord. Um, that today you, you, you didn't harden your heart. And the temptation is to harden our hearts, to, to not listen to the voice of our Father, but to, to insulate. And so I just wanna, I wanna encourage you, if you came forward, or even those that are out there, if you would just close your eyes and just look, the, look at the Lord, just let the, let the eyes of your heart look at the Lord and and just confess to the Lord, Lord, I have had unbelief in this area of my life. I've had unbelief in this specific relationship. I want you to itemize your repentance. What, what led you to fall asleep? What was the day that you lost heart? What was the moment? What, what's the circumstance? And, and really make that exchange. Lord, I wanna confess that I've fallen into unbelief and I'm asking for you to author fresh faith in my heart. Because through this confession and time of repentance, where you're crossing over, and, and what, this, what this light and momentary affliction, this light and momentary affliction, it's producing something inside of you. It's producing an eternal weight of glory far beyond comparison to anything else. And the, the temptation is to not see it as light and momentary because it doesn't feel that way. But in comparison to eternity, this trial, this fire is light and momentary. And it's producing a glory inside of you. A knowledge of the Lord testament and a praise to him that will be beyond comparison to anything else. So we just make this confession tonight, Lord, where there's unbelief, where there's, where we've fallen asleep, where we've given over to slumber. And tonight we, we declare that we're being inwardly renewed inwardly renewed and we're not looking at the things that are seen but lord we're going to look at the things that are unseen we're going to walk by faith we're going to walk by faith we're going to walk by faith and that's what the just do the just walk by faith we walk by faith we walk by faith we move from faith to faith strength to strength hope to hope glory to glory and if it's not good you're not finished if it's not good, you're not finished, Lord. And so we entrust these things to you tonight in Jesus' name. You know, Jesus is, a, Jesus is, just, just feeling my heart uh, just to, just to declare that Jesus is a, a sufficient savior tonight. I know you've heard that Jesus is, is, is savior, but I want you to see that he's a sufficient savior tonight. In your sorrow, he can save you from that. 
He's sufficient. He's not looking at you to, to do it in your own strength. It's actually in your weakness that you can declare strength because he is in that weakness and he's gonna put grace upon it. But I just sense in my heart that some of you, um, some of you the Lord's inviting, uh, he's inviting you to accept him as your savior. He's inviting you tonight, there's an invitation for you to give your whole heart to him as your savior. He's Lord and Savior, but specifically tonight, He's your Savior. He, he has, He will, and He is saving us. It's an ongoing work. And if you need to respond to that, if you need to accept the Lord as your Savior tonight, you're in over your head. There's a situation that, that is, you're in over your head. You're, you're, you're enslaved, maybe it's to addiction or sin. Maybe there's cycles and patterns and habits that you can't get out of. You need a savior. You can't do it on your own. This is the gospel. <laughs> and, and the beauty is that he is willing and ready to save you tonight. And if that's you, if you need that savior, I would like you just to stand to your feet and raise your hand. Just raise your hand tonight. Just acknowledge, I need that savior. Thank you, brother. Can you pray for this brother right here? There's one right here. I want us just to gather around people. If their hands are up, just raise them high. We're gonna pray for you. There's someone in the balcony, someone right here, the, in the Yankees jersey right there. Can you guys pray for him? Just lay hands on him. Let's be the body just for the next 60 seconds or so. Just lay hands on these people. Just declare that he is a good and faithful savior. If there's anyone else, just raise your hand. We wanna pray for you. Thank you, Jesus. Come to the Lord. We call upon the name of the Lord. Just call upon the name of the Lord. Confess, Jesus, I need, I need you. Lord, you are the savior of my life, now and forevermore. Lord, I entrust my heart to you. I entrust myself, my soul to you. And Lord, I'm believing that, that, that grace is meeting these hearts, that your grace, Lord, the substance of our faith, grace is gonna establish these hearts. And Father, that something is shifting tonight as we pray for them in Jesus' name. Just declare light into darkness, life into death, holiness into the horrific. We just declare, Father, you are moving. Thank you, Father. Can we sing that one more time, David? None but Jesus. Just as a savior, we're just gonna sing this over these guys. Son of God who gave himself for me. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're cutting, you're cutting ties to addiction. Lord, you're liberating hearts from addiction. You just say addiction, go in Jesus' name. Lord, the shame of addiction, the guilt of addiction right now. Power of your spirit. Come, come, come. You are free tonight. He who the Son set free is free indeed. Be free, be free, be free tonight. 
Come on, none but Jesus. Your Savior's here. Take his hand. Take his hand. Take his hand. Fix your eyes on Jesus. He's the author. He's the perfecter. He's the sustainer. He is Savior and Lord. Jesus. There's no one like him. The one and only. The shepherd of our souls. this so strongly I want to pray one more time um, I, I feel like one of the coping mechanisms that that have insulated our hearts and our slumber because of the sorrow uh, is, is addiction and and I feel like it th that addiction it's it's a it's almost like a demonic lullaby that just that keeps the pain it numbs the pain it, it just it, it lulls you to sleep and and I feel like the Lord tonight he's waking up your heart but this this whole revelation of him as Savior and deliverer it's it's to get you out of these cycles it's to break the patterns it's to break the coping mechanisms he wants to be your coping mechanism. He wants to be your go-to. He's tired of sharing you. He's tired of a divided house. He's tired of a double-minded person who says, I confess one thing with my mouth, but my actions are actually finding comfort in something else. And he, I sense his zeal and I sense the fear of the Lord that tonight he's saying, come out. Come out. And and it's his mercies and there's this 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 song of deliverance and a shout even of deliverance that that you're being spit out tonight you're back in the will of God you're you're walking under the counsel and the voice of your father He's so merciful and long-suffering and kind, but I just sense his zeal. He's tired of sharing you. He's tired of the double-mindedness. For a double-minded man is unstable in all that he does. And he's just shining light into the hidden recesses of your heart. And it's not, 
It's compromising intimacy with him. And so, Lord, would your zeal, zeal for your house, zeal for these temples, would it touch them tonight? You are a jealous God. You are an all-consuming fire. And so set your fire ablaze, Lord. And if that's you, if, if, if addiction's a deal, and I'm not, I'm not, you know if that's you. It can be Netflix. It can be, it can be habitual patterns of drinking or uh, just ways we take the edge off. The Lord wants to be, He wants to be the one that does that. He wants to be the one that you go to. And so in Jesus' name tonight, if that's anyone in this room, just confess to the Lord, repent to the Lord. Lord, I've been double-minded. Lord, I've, it's been you and whatever that is, identify it and cast it down. Identify it and, and cast it aside. Anything that's lofty, anything that we've exalted as a comforter, just, just, just break agreement with it tonight. Just since there's something so significant about what you're doing in your confession and in your repentance. Go ahead and name it to the Lord. Say it to him. Lord, I have been finding comfort in this. And I repent. And I ask you to fill me, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. I ask you to comfort me. was going to heal bodies as we let some of this like backlog the clogging out the bodies would be healed it I sense digestive issues being healed stomach pain thank you Lord thank you Lord digestive issues being healed that 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 what was happening spiritually would manifest physically thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Jesus Gethsemane when he said not my will but yours be done yeah. and I believe it's in John 4 he says that uh, my bread is to do the will of my father and, and so father we we receive this bread as, yes. as man is sent from heaven your body broken for us and because you fulfilled the will of the father we we now can partake. That Lord, our, our, our bread is to do your will. Lord, it's where we find life. And so, we put our faith in this meal and what has been provided for us, Lord. Lord, those 39 lashes Lord, the whipping post, the stripes, where you, your body was filleted, it was, it was, thirty-nine times, and 
by those stripes, Lord, we, we find our healing tonight. So we put our faith in this meal. Just anyone that needs physical healing, uh, specifically emotional healing too, uh, where anxiety or insomnia, we just declare that this bread is sufficient for your healing tonight. We declare there's authority in this meal, that this meal is different than any other meal. Paul said for, you know, because you're not judging rightly this meal, many of you are weak, sick, and dying, which means this meal can actually make us strong, healthy, and live longer. <laughs> and so we put our faith, Lord, in what you've sourced. Your broken body receive the bread of life. All self-harm, I heard the Lord say, self-harm being healed in Jesus' name. blood, the blood that was shed. <clears throat> Leviticus 17.3 says that the life, the life of a being is found in the blood. And Jesus, you came to give us life and life abundantly and in this cup, you provided that for us. I believe with all my heart that the most powerful substance to ever touch the face of the earth is the blood of Jesus. It's stronger than any rebellious decision you've ever made. It's stronger than any generational curse. It's stronger than any inner vow. It's stronger than any virus, bacteria. It's stronger than any military weapon. It's stronger than the powers of hell. It's stronger than any demonic assault. And we apply your blood tonight over our lives. We apply it. We apply it, Lord. We declare it over our kids. We declare it over our generational lines. Lord, we apply your blood. There's authority and power in the blood of Jesus. There's life in this blood. It's by your blood we draw near. It's by your blood our sins are removed. It's by your blood our consciences are cleansed. It's by your blood that we're justified, sanctified, and one day we'll be glorified with you, Lord Jesus, because of the blood. Through the blood we have redemption, which is the forgiveness of sins. By your blood, Lord Jesus, death sting, death sting has been removed. By your blood, Lord Jesus, iniquities, internal sin, and transgressions, external sins, where the power of sin has been severed from our lives. We find freedom in your blood. We find cleansing in your blood. We find hope in your blood. So put your faith in this cup tonight, beloved, and receive this cup with thanksgiving. Can you just tell Jesus, thank you? for your blood. Thank you for your shed blood. This blood flowed out of your heart through the piercings in your body. Lord, that veil was torn. The blood was shed so that we could boldly approach you and find mercy and grace in our time of need. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood. Thank you, lastly, that the blood speaks. And so give us ears to hear what the blood is speaking over our lives, Lord, especially in suffering, Lord, tonight. Lord, give us ears of faith. Give us eyes of faith to hear, Lord, what your blood is speaking. It's speaking a better word than the blood of Abel. It's speaking <laughs> the voice of life. So as you drink this, would you listen? As you drink this, would the eyes of your heart be open to the hope of your calling and what is before you in Jesus' name. Receive the blood. Can we end this way? Can we stand up? Oh, you want to come and end it? Come here. 
No, no, no. I, got, I just had a fun way we were going to end. I feel like we need to do one last thing. Can we stand to our feet? And then, Ryan, you can take it. But I feel like deliverance came tonight. And I want to just release a shout of deliverance. So on the count of three, let's just release a shout of deliverance and uh, believe that as you walk out these doors, uh, your life's going to be transformed, changed. You're walking out renewed. Amen? So on the count of three, let's just release a shout. One, two, three. Yes. from here there's uh, we're going from this shout of victory and let it be true let us sing this all the way home a song of praise and victory over our lives aren't we thankful for pastor michael and larissa miller we are so so thankful for you guys what a day what a day but we're going to release you guys so on behalf of pastor michael and jessica we love you guys. We'll see you guys next Sunday. We'll see you guys watching online. Go in victory in Jesus' name. I love you guys. Everyone, Michael and Jess here. We are standing on the exact location where the headquarters for Jesus Image will be. Local church, Jesus School, uh, House of Bethany, all of that will be located right here. In fact, in the exact spot where Jesse and I are standing will be the beautiful pond in front of the sanctuary where we will most likely be holding baptism services occasionally. So we're so excited. We're right here in Seminole County off of Lake Mary Boulevard. We own this land. God owns this land, I should say. And the building will be right behind us. The sanctuary, the admin building, and the prayer house. And so listen, we just want to say thank you so much. Thank you for standing with us. Thank you for giving. Thank you for praying. Thank you for being so patient and believing with us. We're believing God that the nations will descend on this property, that they will worship Jesus, that the sick will be healed here, that the lost will be saved, that the presence and glory of God will rest here. We want that. We believe this is holy ground and that the tangible glory of Jesus will be right here on this land. And so we want to invite you to come and invite you to be a part of what God is going to do here. Yeah, we are just so very thankful for you. Thank you so much for your prayers and your love and support. We are truly blown away with what the Lord is doing, and we cannot wait to have you here with us one day. Yeah, and we're really excited about what we're going to show you right now. We want to take you on a journey and show you the incredible design, detail, and vision of what will take place on this property. Our Jesus Image home will be located in the beautiful Seminole County right off of Lake Mary Boulevard. This is a thriving area filled with families, restaurants, and the beautiful amenities that this area provides. The vision of this property is simple. We want the presence of Jesus Christ to be known. We have a deep value for experiencing the Lord in His beauty and the majesty of His creation. This facility will host our local church family, Jesus School, which is our discipleship training program yearly conferences, the Bethany House of Prayer, and it will also be an outreach hub for the state and nation. There is vision behind everything. 
the location of the buildings, the landscaping, the water features, and of course the architectural design of the buildings themselves all speak to the beauty of the Lord. We want all who enter the property to feel as though they've entered into the peace of the presence of God. With all the stress and turmoil that people face on a daily basis, this will be a place of serenity, worship, reflection, and adoration. Rather than this feeling like a headquarters, we want this to be the house of God and a home for his people. You will notice that the structures themselves have a timeless look and design. From the stonework to the stained glass, it will feel like the house of God. The gospel will be declared from every side of the property in multiple different ways. As you pull into the new Jesus Image home, you will discover a massive parking area that will be framed by and filled with beautiful shrubbery and trees. There will be plenty of room for you and your family. A beautiful drive leads you to the sanctuary building. You will enter through a stone archway. Upon the archway, one of the foundational verses for Jesus Image will be inscribed. This verse carries the heartbeat of our lives and the construction of this house. Only one thing is needed, Luke 10, 42. Upon entering the front door to the main building, you will see a massive gathering area. It is a two-story structure. The first level will be filled with life. This will be a place to congregate with friends and family, to get your children checked into children's church, to eat, or simply enjoy a coffee around a beautiful fireplace. The first level will also house the youth room. We have a major focus on seeing this next generation love Jesus. The youth room will seat approximately 500 people. This room will also serve as the second year facility for Jesus School. Our children's rooms will be located on the first level. This will be a convenient experience for children and parents upon their arrival. Our children will receive amazing Bible teaching, a worship experience, and knowledge of the presence of the Holy Spirit for themselves. The second level of the main building will facilitate working spaces for our board of directors, our staff, and interns. This will be a great blessing for us as we move forward in wisdom as a ministry. As you know, God has graced Jesus' image with a massive reach through media. Thousands have come to Jesus, and so many have been healed and set free through our media ministry. We will have our very own production studio where we can create content and continue to stream live to the nations. We will release podcasts, social media content, videos, and much more. Multiplied millions have watched our media content, and we believe our creative team will flourish in this new space as they step out into this vital and anointed calling. As you walk across the main gathering space, you will discover the sanctuary. What an amazing space this will be. While we will have state-of-the-art technology in the sanctuary, the space will take you back in time, a time when churches had a sacred feel to them. You will discover beautiful stained glass behind the platform. Stained glass will line the sides of the sanctuary as well, all telling the gospel story of Jesus. There will be timeless wood beaming and stonework throughout. We long for his presence to fill this place, and it will be a home for you as well. We will seat approximately 1,500 people, yet it will not lose the personal feel that we so deeply value. The platform will be spacious with plenty of room for ministry, our worship teams, and of course, a baptismal. You will notice a round stained glass image on the back wall of the sanctuary depicting a dove in fire descending in the room. May the Holy Spirit fill our hearts each time we gather as a church family. The sanctuary space will also serve Jesus School. This will house our hundreds of first year students as well as our general school sessions. These students will be missionaries to the nations of the world and to their generation. The gospel will be declared from this sanctuary space multiple times per week and people will be raised up from this place to share Jesus with the world. And may millions be saved, healed, and touched by the Holy Spirit. Lastly, for our favorite space on the property, the Bethany House of Prayer. This will be the prayer house for Jesus' image. 
It will be a place for adoration, silent prayer, reflecting upon the scriptures, and worship. You will notice that the house will be built upon a pond. The setting will be quaint and breathtaking. Stone and wood mark the space with warmth and a traditional look that we believe will transcend generations. We believe this will be the hub of the entire property, a place where intimacy with God and pure prayer ascend before Him. It is named the Bethany House because Bethany was the place where Jesus was loved deeply. Therefore, He rested there. Mary found the better part, and it is our prayer that all who enter will find Jesus there and fall in love with Him. May Jesus be pleased with all that takes place here. May He be adored and worshiped on this property. May His Word be taught with clarity, boldness, and love. May His Gospel flood the nations, and may the generations to come find Him here. Will you stand with us? Will you pray and give toward this vision? Will you give sacrificially for the sake of Jesus and His Gospel? Will you be a part of something that will outlive you for the sake of eternity? Thank you. We love you. Jesus is beautiful.